Simple Cafe Sound, illustrated tutorials, short and sweet. Hey, welcome. Let's go over how to connect your Xbox One to active speakers such as sound bars. And we'll even go over how to connect passive speakers that connect to amplifiers. All with the Toslink Optical SPDIF port. Yeah, that's a lot of names. Anyway, here's a diagram that you can pause on and perhaps you don't need to go into all the details with the rest of the video. But give me a little like to let me know if you appreciate this. So on the left side is the path for your active speakers. Basically any speaker that plugs into the wall. From the Xbox, we'll come out with the optical cable and connect it to a speaker if it has that same SPDIF port. If it doesn't, we'll have to connect to another device like a bridge and from there continue to our speaker via an RCA or aux cable. This side of the map is for passive speakers, which plug into receivers with these cables. By the way, you could possibly pull this off with these types of stereos too. Okay, let's have a closer look now with video footage. First things first, we'll plug in our optical cable into the SPDIF port of our Xbox. We will need an optical cable no matter what. If you don't have one, you can find a link to one in the description to get started. Right then, so from here we're going to connect in one of two ways. The first way is the easiest. We'll be able to connect directly into a stereo receiver, portable speaker, or soundbar. If we can't connect directly, we'll need to bring in a separate device that's going to serve as our bridge. So, can you connect directly? Well, that's going to come down to whether your sound system has that same SPDIF port as your Xbox. Like we would see on a receiver here, on a powered portable speaker here, or a soundbar here. And the connection will be as simple as this. But you probably didn't click on this video for such a simple connection which in my opinion is not typically the best sounding. You see, a lot of our older sound systems don't have this port, but they still sound great, right? So we shouldn't discard them just because it doesn't have a port that we can easily integrate with the device to serve as a bridge. That device being a digital to analog converter. I avoided these for the longest time, but I was glad when I finally got one. I actually regretted not buying it sooner much better experience with my games and movies. Now let me spare you from buying the wrong converter because you want to verify that it's called digital to analog because there's actually other converters with the name flipped. Analog to digital which will not work for us here. You can also double check by seeing that on the input side there's the SPDIF port. And make sure that the ports that your sound system needs are on the other side, the output side. Oh no, my speaker only has aux and my converter only has RCA. No worries, there's an easy fix. All you'll need is an aux to RCA cable and just flip and connect however you need. Because RCA and aux are pretty interchangeable. Now that my connection is complete, audio signals can be sent from the converter to the speaker. There's no sound in the converter yet though, so let's go send them in from our Xbox. Okay, optical cable is in the SPDIF port of our Xbox. Now we put it into the same port in our converter on the input side. So, if this is the same type of speaker you have, a powered one, you're all done. Well, once you plug in the power for the converter too. Give me a little like if that helped you out. Now, let's not forget about our awesome passive speakers. Basically, if you have a speaker that connects with this type of wire, well, I assume you already have it connected to your stereo amp. Now, in case you skipped over to this part of the video, let's get back to the start with our Xbox, which already has the optical cable ready to go. We'll connect the other end into the input side of our converter into that same SPDIF port. Now that the sound is in, we can come out on the output side through RCA. Or if you want to connect through an aux port, you can find a converter like this which has both RCA and aux. Just remember that you could always use an RCA to aux cable if your converter ports don't match your speaker ports. Okay, you can connect to either a power speaker via aux, any speaker or receiver with RCA, if you have a lot of RCA options and you don't know which one to plug into, go ahead and choose any of them as long as it's not labeled REC out. 
Then go to your front of your receiver and make sure you change it to the matching input slash source slash channel that you connected to. Also, aux in will work just as well. Anyway, mission accomplished. Man, I gotta tell you, connecting to external speakers is totally worth it. And when you add a subwoofer, whoa, 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 forget about it. An even richer experience. If you're curious about subwoofers, here's a video I made to give you some insight. One last thing to point out about connecting to your stereo is if you're trying to use the headphone jack, I don't blame you because technically it is an aux port. Sadly though, it's not going to work out for us because headphone ports are out ports for sending audio out to headphones. And in this case, we're trying to send audio signals in to our stereo, right? So you see, since the flow of signals are in opposite directions, well, they're just locked and we hear nothing. I know this stuff can be a bit confusing at times, so I've made some videos to help you get grounded on some audio basics. So go ahead and have a look around. And if you're also interested in solutions for videos such as TV connections and more, have a look at my other channel called Simple Cafe Vision. Link in the description. All right, I'll see you on the next one and here's to your success. Cheers.